Hello, Jeff Zwerink. Welcome again to our conversation. Excited to have you here. We've got Dr. Leslie Wickman, and we're just going to explore some of how she's interacted with science and the design of the earth and life out there. So let's join our conversation. Leslie, it's great to have you. Enjoyed being able to interact with you. Great to be here, Jeff. You've mentioned uh, in a number of places that Hugh Ross and the work he's done has been impactful on you. What are some of the things that have been impactful and wh why has it resonated with you? Well, I think, you know, I kind of consider him to be the, the master of the fine tuning argument, you know? Right. Uh, and so many uh, new discoveries that play into that. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it, you look at all of these different parameters that have to be just exactly what they are, essentially, or within mm -hmm. a very narrow range of values in order to get life in the universe. And, and um, then you look at the odds of getting all of those uh, just exactly right. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the improbability of it is just staggering. And so for me, that has just been such a, a great apologetics tool you know, in terms of having conversations uh, of the big questions with people. And so, you know, that I think it's just enabled me to um, be a lot more confident in speaking about my faith and that science supports it and um, having those kinds of conversations. Has there been any particular aspect of that fine tuning that you've either used a lot or that you find particularly impactful? Kind of specific examples. Right. Is, yeah. And one of the, one of the specific examples I love, and it's very relevant to uh, my aerospace work as well, mm -hmm. is is um, the the uh, mass of the Earth, which gives rise to the gravity of the Earth, mm -hmm. and the fact that the Earth is able to hold on to just the right compounds. Uh, that are needed for life. For example, with the atmosphere, being able to um, hold on to large amounts of water vapor at mm -hmm. 18 grams per mole, right. but not large amounts of methane and ammonia at 16 and 17 grams per mole. So that fine tuning mm -hmm. to create a uh, livable atmosphere that contains water vapor for the water cycle, but not huge amounts of poisonous gases that would snuff us out. It, it's fascinating you mentioned that because I actually remember one of my astronomy classes in in college. We did that calculation. Yeah. I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty remarkable. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, what's your take? Uh, you know, obviously, Earth is very finely tuned for us to be here. What's right. your take on whether we're going to find life? Is this the only place, or is there life out there? Right. So, the fine tuning argument kind of plays into that too, and looking at the um, incredible improbability that life would arise anywhere in the universe, and yet here we are, to me basically says, well, there there had to be a creator involved, mm -hmm. an intelligent right. creator involved. And so um, looking, though, at that same kind of natural uh, probability, it's like, well, it's unlikely from a naturalistic perspective that we would be here, let alone that life would pop up another place. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, since we believe that God created life here, then God certainly could have created life elsewhere too. So it seems like it's a it's a fascinating scientific question, but there's this theological Absolutely. question that it's almost it's like that's what weighs in more on your mind in yeah, terms yeah, of whether exactly. there might be life. So exactly. Did God create life right. elsewhere? And so I guess one of the things that um, you know is is important to me in this consideration is, you know, my faith has, has been supported substantially by my research in science. Mm -hmm. And my, I feel like my faith is so well grounded because everywhere I look and everything that I, uh, you know, pursue in science comports really well with my Christian faith, um, that my idea of who God is, my view of who God is, has been greatly expanded. And I feel like I've taken God out of the box that maybe I'd constructed mm. for him as a young person, you know. And now it's like my God is so big, my view of who God is is so majestic and amazing and mighty and powerful that I'd be surprised if he didn't create life elsewhere. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, the human history that we've mm -hmm. experienced on this planet is almost too limiting to, to just say, well, that's the only 
only thing that God ever did in time and eternity, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, and so I would be almost surprised if God didn't create life elsewhere. In fact, I'd be almost surprised if we didn't live in a multiverse. You think that too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. Well, let, let me ask you a question because that's often, I mean, you know, you look at the movie Contact, kind of the pervasive right. idea. Oh, everything's so big. You know, I'd be surprised if there wasn't life. It just seems like a waste of space. Is that what you're saying, or is it distinct from that? Yeah, I think it's distinct in in some ways, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't look at the universe as being a waste of space because I think, um, you know, in order to get the universe that we have that does support life, even here on our own little planet, um... You know, there. Okay, so let me back up for a second. I, I, I kind of look at, you know, this is this is a poor analogy, but um, it's it's one that my brain can grasp. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of think of God as this incredibly masterful um, programmer, but he's more than that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to confine him to right. just that, but just in terms of setting the initial conditions for this universe. Um, uh, you know, creating the laws of physics that it's governed by, right? And um, and having the amazing foresight mm-hmm. to, given those conditions, given those governing laws, how it all unfolds, right? And um, and so I I think that you know, given the laws of physics in place, given the initial conditions, given the resources, all this sort of thing, the universe we have is ideal to support life here on this planet. Right. So it's not, I don't look at it as wasted space, Mm -hmm. wasted empty space. I mean, it's the laws of physics are in play. We have, you know, we're learning more now about dark matter, dark Mm -hmm. energy, and how, you know, how that affects so many different things. You know, we we learned about black holes and Mm -hmm. the possibility of wormholes and all these kinds of things that are just so intriguing. And I'm taken back to some passages of scripture that talk about it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. And this Mm -hmm. kind of, God has created this incredibly interesting universe for us to explore and learn not only about his creation, which is magnificent and amazing in itself, but also about the God behind it. And so I don't consider it wasted space. Right. <laughs> um, I, I, I marvel at the intricacy and the synergy and um, also the, the naturalistic improbability that mm-hmm. all these things would right. come together. Okay. Uh, at the same time, like I said, just because my view of who God is is expanded so much, I feel like this universe is not big enough for him. You know, I think if there, you know, we live in a multiverse, that makes it even more interesting. And, and like I said, I, I think I'd be surprised if, if he hadn't created life elsewhere, whether that's in this universe or in another. Very good. Well, thanks. I appreciate your comments. You know, we, we do just live in a fascinating universe, and Leslie has gotten to explore a lot of that and has some great insights. Go to reasons.org, search for her name, Leslie Wickman. You'll get some great resources to help you understand what she's found fascinating and just how this creation reveals the creator of the Bible. 